The General Teaching Council for Scotland, the GTCS, places unnecessary obstacles in the path of teachers wanting to teach in Scotland, administers an unnecessarily bureaucratic professional update scheme that lowers the threshold for deregistering teachers, and publishes a magazine that's more government propaganda than professional journal, all while increasing its annual charge. GTCS should be wound up and its critical functions, such as teachers' registration, dealt with by the Education Department directly. Right, well, that's what the Scottish Family Party's policy on education says about the General Teaching Council for Scotland. Now, I'm going to look at that a little bit more now by having a browse through their latest magazine, which is called Teaching Scotland. And let's have a look what sort of things they talk about in there. So the first section I'm looking at here is a big uh, double page news spread. Let's see what it says. Guidance on exclusion from school. A positive approach to preventing and, and managing school exclusions. They will prevent the need for exclusion. So instead of pupils being expelled effectively, they'll still be in school. Alongside this policy, it also sees it necessary to mention uh, sections on de-escalation and physical intervention on managing incidents involving weapons. That doesn't sound a good combination to me, keeping pupils in school and then coping with them physically in response to their incidents involving weapons. No wonder teaching doesn't seem that attractive a prospect to many people now. What else have we got on this page? A bit about equality and diversity. 92.8% uh, of students enrolled in Scotland's colleges are white. 2.9% are Asian, 2.2% are black. Who cares? But they obviously think that's very important. But what else have we got on the news page here? New resources to tackle the technology gender gap. Oh, surprise, surprise. We'll come on to more of that later. And measuring the attainment gap. Surprise, surprise. The attainment gap between uh, the higher performing schools in uh, generally wealthier areas and lower academic performance in schools in less well off areas. The assumption is that this difference is to do with some sort of societal injustice, uh, but it's based on the assumption that academic ability is evenly distributed throughout income groups. But that isn't the case. So these differentials are not necessarily indications of inequality. Now, obviously, we want education as good as possible to help all pupils and pupils that are struggling get a bit of extra help. Absolutely. But closing the attainment gaps is not the be all and end all of education. What else have we got on this page? Uh, teacher bursaries for STEM subjects. So £20,000 to people who will change career to go and teach uh, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. A real shortage in these areas. Now, I knew someone a few years ago who applied to do a teacher training course to become a maths teacher. But she could have been one of the people filling this shortfall at the moment. She was turned down for the course because she wasn't suitably qualified. She had a PhD in mechanical engineering. But somehow or other, that wasn't sufficient to be in schools teaching kids to factorise quadratic equations or whatever. Completely ridiculous. Moving on, what have we got? Oh, uh, wards. Teaching Scotland, this magazine has been shortlisted in the best publication category. Sounds good. What could this award be for? Professional journals? No, it's from the Chartered Institute of Public Relations. Uh, quite appropriate, I would say, because this uh, magazine is a public relations exercise uh, by the Scottish Government. What have we got next? Uh, the Betty Bus. This is awareness for period education. The bright pink and yellow Betty Bus uh, visit schools, uh, the pupils have a look around and they learn all about uh, periods. Now, obviously, girls need to learn about periods and boys need to know a little bit of, as well. So, yeah, cover that in PSHE. But do we really want that emblazoning all over a big, silly looking bus in the school playground? Is that not something that's, that's quite a private thing? And that's the way it should be. Not according to uh, educationalists in Scotland. Right, moving on, there's a big article uh, by leader of GTCS. Well, that's just summarising things in the other sections. We'll leave that for now. So what are we on to next? Social justice, living the commitment. Now, when I hear the phrase social justice, I associate that with political views with which I disagree. I see it with um, brands of feminism, 
people who try and bring race into politics at every opportunity, uh, LGBT campaigners who I think try to influence society and education in ways that are not helpful. So social justice, I would basically say it's a political philosophy that I disagree with. In fact, social justice, I would even say, is an oxymoron. Justice can only apply to individuals. As soon as you try to apply justice to groups, it actually results in injustices to individuals. So social justice, no, that's not a philosophy that I ascribe to. Yet GTCS make it one of their core principles to be a teacher. It's one of the core values to which teachers are expected to subscribe to register with GTCS. So let's have a look what this, uh, what this article is about. Maybe I've got the wrong end of the stick. Maybe it's not really about the things I was thinking. Let's see what this says. This is written by Professor Rowena Arshad, Chair in Multicultural and Anti-Racist Education, Head of Mori House School of Education, and she was awarded the GTCS Conveners Award 2017 for her outstanding commitment to GTCS professional values. Right, that's what she's got to say. We need to engage in intellectual consideration of social justice concepts and frameworks. Engaging pupils in discussions about diversity, difference and discrimination, as well as consistency in how we address the range of issues that could be badged under the equalities umbrella. How society has been organized over hundreds of years impact on us today. For example, colonialism has ensured race has been used as a concept to decide who is seen as part of us and who is not. And it's played into the present discourses of immigration. The impact of patriarchy has impacted on women's rights. And to this day, women fa face gender pay gaps across the world. And men and women continue to grapple with stereotypical gender expectations. So my suspicions are confirmed. This is absolutely from a, polit a political philosophy with which I entirely disagree. And this article is telling me this is what I have to subscribe to as a teacher in Scotland. And it's saying your mission as a teacher of Scotland is to basically indoctrinate your pupils with this ideology. On she goes. Paul Flier also suggested that we need to consider where they were engaging in a banking or transformative model of education. The former sees us as the ones who hold the knowledge and the pupils as passive recipients of that knowledge. You hear this idea again and again in Scottish education. The pupils are not empty vessels for us to fill up uh, with knowledge. Now, if you look at Scotland, slide down the literacy and numeracy league tables, I think you can see that um, certainly is, uh, is happening. They're not being filled up with uh, knowledge. Obviously, pupils are not supposed to be passive. Obviously, there's more to teaching than just presenting facts. But this is always a one-way street. It's always you're going to move away from facts more into uh, collaborative, subjective styles of education. No balance at all. We have at our disposal a powerful tool to promote social justice, the curriculum. Regardless of the subject area, there are always opportunities to ensure that the formal and hidden curriculum can assist us to live our professional values of social justice. Every aspect of what goes on in school can be used to push our political philosophy, is what she's saying. Uh, we should not worry if we do not live and breathe social justice at the same pace 24 7. Gee, that's a relief. As long as equity front and center remains core. So, just a blatant example of uh, the exhortation to use Scottish education as a means to indoctrinate young people into the political philosophy that dominates the Scottish Parliament. Right, what are we on to next? Um, standards bearer. This is about the fitness to teach procedure. GTCS um, assesses teachers and sometimes it might say a teacher is unfit to teach, they might be deregistered and therefore unable to work in Scotland. I'm currently following up an issue with GTCS. Uh, after they informed me that stating that abortion is immoral could be seen as contravening their professional standards. Now, I objected to that uh, very strongly. Uh, they're in the process of deciding whether they really meant that or not. I said, for example, if that were to be on a Facebook page, 
or in a letter to a newspaper. So outside school, unrelated to school, and they replied saying, yes, that could be seen as offensive, therefore in contravention of our standards. My response to that is, well, bad luck for your standards then, because I'm still going to state my beliefs in this very important area. I'm not going to be bullied and intimidated into silence, so we'll wait and see what they say. So yes, they do the police the teaching profession, but it seems like that policing goes beyond what's relevant for professionalism into adhering to the right political views and to stifling public debate. Right, next session, surprise, 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 LGBTI education, there seems to be some in every magazine, positive change, um, what about the Thai campaign? You know the sort of thing that will say, I'll just read a couple of bits. If Scotland schools were marked on their performance in addressing LGBTI issues among their staff and young people, they would probably score a pass. But they certainly wouldn't yet make the top grade. Well, of course they wouldn't, because if they would make the top grade, that would be no reason to keep funding all of your organisations, wouldn't it? Are they ever going to reach the top grade? Of course they're not. There's always a crisis. There's always more that needs doing. More money needs spending. And the LGBT agenda needs to be pushed ever more firmly. What else did I say? The infamous Section 28, which made it illegal for teachers to promote homosexuality in the classroom, was repealed 17 years ago. But he adds that no real effort has been made to fill the vacuum. So it was illegal to promote homosexuality. It's now not illegal, but there hasn't been an effort to fill the vacuum. Which vacuum is that exactly? I assume it's the vacuum of promoting homosexuality within the classroom. Well, I don't think that vacuum does exist. I think there's, a, there's been huge efforts in that regard. What else do we say? Uh, we have more LGBT and allies groups being set up in schools. There are now more than 100 of these groups across Scotland. Right, let's move on. What else have we got? Um, right, trips to Auschwitz, learning about the Holocaust in schools. Now, that's a very valid activity. Children should certainly learn about the Holocaust and its horrors, and they should learn about the beliefs and the full misguided philosophy behind it. Very definitely, trips to Auschwitz, etc., can be very valid, very powerful experience. On the other hand, though, there have also been equal, if not worse, horrors perpetrated in the name of communism in the last century. About 100 million people killed, some people estimate, by communist regimes. Some people claim that there have been more people killed pursuing the ideology of equality than any other ideology. So the Nazi horrors by the extreme right, the communist horrors by the extreme left, now, if you put all of your resources in alerting people to the dangers of the extreme right, while ignoring completely the dangers of the extreme left, one has to start wondering why that is. Now, if you put that alongside the other things we've been seeing here, that Scottish education is heavily skewed towards promoting a left-leaning cultural vision, then this approach fits in with that perfectly. Now, this article, let's see if this affirms what I've been saying there. Let's see. Gillian McGee, history teacher at Bishop Briggs Academy, believes that given the current climate, there has never been a more relevant time to teach children about the lessons of the Holocaust. We talk about the current inequalities around the world and genocide and also talk about bullying in school. That's a pretty wide spectrum if you're including those things. Um, as associated with the Holocaust. Anyway, let's carry on. Throughout our discussions, pupils have been making reference to what is going on in the US and comparing how it started with the events leading up to the Holocaust. So basically, Donald Trump is the forerunner of another Holocaust. Donald Trump and Hitler are sort of on the same spectrum, and Donald Trump is a Hitler in the making, is the sort of implication there. So that's what the kids are saying. I wonder why they say that. I wonder how much the teacher leads them to that conclusion. Well, what has the teacher said? They have a good background knowledge of how the Holocaust came to be, and they can tie it in with current affairs. So teachers saying, well done to the pupils for making these connections. Right, on we go. The pre primary engineering scheme, trying to encourage children to see engineering as a good career. Now, that sounds a good idea. 
Uh, we need engineers, very definitely. So something to promote engineering in primary schools, all well and good. But where do you think the emphasis in this scheme really lies? Let's have a read of it. There's a growing awareness that the gender bias needs to be tackled. Uh, yes, it uh, needs to be tackled early, it certainly does. Uh, Professor Simon Baron Cohen has published research that shows that the gender, uh, the sex difference between interest in people and interested in mechanical devices can be measured after one day of life. So yeah, you certainly need to, uh, it certainly does start early. Tackling career paths and tackling gender stereotypes, the next section. Uh, I was very interested in motivating girls to try and break the stereotypes. On and on it goes, just everything you would uh, imagine. Right, what are we on to next? Um, a question of balance. The Scottish Funding Council to tackle gender underrepresentation in college and university courses. Society's expectations skew the gender balance in education. In the country's colleges and universities, some courses are dominated by males or females, not because the, int the institutions want it that way, but because young women and men are pressurized into following certain career paths. Absolute rubbish is because men and women uh, tend to have different interests and want to follow different careers paths. Uh, we're tackling societal issues and it will be difficult, but it's something that must be done. So there's a gender action plan. Female underrepresentation exists in subjects including construction, engineering, and IT. There's a male underrepresentation in areas such as childcare, hair and beauty, and early years teaching. I must stress, this isn't about quotas. What we've said is that any class that's made up of more than 75% of one gender should be considered as having a significant imbalance, and colleges, universities should tackle that through their own gender action plan. So what are you going to do? Throw a load of girls off the hairdressing course? Not let boys sign on for the engineering course? Are you going to have girls applying for hairdressing and say, nope, it's brick lane for you? Well, it's up to the colleges, but they've got to sort out this so-called problem one way or another. New College of Lanarkshire, what are they up to? Uh, the college's leisure and lifestyle faculty is looking at the underrepresentation of men in beauty there's a lack of evidence of why men are reluctant to take these subjects. I just can't imagine. I think there's hordes of men who would just love to study makeup and beauty, but they're put off by social stereotypes. If we can just break down those barriers, there'll be a flood of men moving into those areas, I don't think. What else have we got? The Scottish Government needs to work with agencies uh, that interact with children from the minute they're born. What do they say? If these differences can be measured within a day of being born, these want to get in from the minute they're born. So this is Scottish educationalists wanting to influence your children. Start their social engineering project from the minute they're born. There are deep-seated cultural factors and attitudes at play here. I wonder who's, whose fault that must be. It must be those parents. The state had better get in quick and rescue these babies from the influence of their parents. There can be resistance. Some people think it's political correctness gone mad, uh, or it's a social engineering. However, progress is long overdue, and we're determined to play our part. Right, excellent. You'll be uh, getting a good inspection report next time at that college. Right, then there's the professional update system. Every five years, basically, you have to re-register as a teacher. And what that does, it makes the GTCS have more control over teachers because it's a much easier process to say to someone you failed to renew your registration rather than actually making a positive case why someone should be struck off. So they've got this ridiculously bureaucratic, time-wasting professional update uh, process that generates a mountain of, uh, sort of online paperwork, if you like, uh, that probably no one reads. Um, but anyway, they think they're doing a good job with this. What else have we got? Ah, now here's a page. Here's an article where I disagreed with nothing, nothing at all. We'll just have a look at this one on the screen. Right, what else have we got? Next article, oh, surprise, surprise. Design for diversity. The National Framework for Inclusion challenges teachers to think deeply about their role in promoting equality and social justice. Here's a little bit. The framework is a series of questions which helps teachers throughout their career 
to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it so they can bring about greater equality and social justice. Yon, 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 yon. And oh, there's the crossword at last. Bit of light relief, the crossword. Um, the clues, what are the clues? Right, seven across. It's about achieving equity in our educational outcomes. Or equity means the same outcomes. It's about equalizing outcomes. So basically the ultimate of that is all kids leave school with the same qualifications, I assume. And that's it. That's their magazine. Uh, so it fully fulfills my expectations. It's not a professional journal. It's promoting the ideology of the government. There's no debate about that. And it shows just how monochrome the Scottish educational establishment is.